Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for the week of December 2nd. Uh, you have this Chaos and Conflict card and this Between Worlds card, and yeah, uh, I like this Between Worlds card, and actually this makes sense as well with the Judgment card. The Be Between Worlds card kind of says you've been in purgatory for a while. Uh, you haven't been sure of like whether to move, move forwards or backwards or what to do. Uh, you know, this Flamingo is going from like black and white to color. It's almost like with the Chaos and Conflict card that you're finally making a decision, which is great. I think all your readings for like 2023 in 2024 for Aquarius were about uh, making some sort of choice <laughs> it, that is going to affect the direction of your life and it looks to me like you could finally be, be making it uh, whatever that choice is um, you know so far it looks like a financial decision so this could be about like your career um, your work uh, where you live even can be a financial choice or decision so you know again I kind of feel like that is what is going on here for you, Aquarius? You could be like finally picking something that you want to do as well. Uh, you have the Judgment card, the Devil, and the Seven of Swords. The you know this kind of gives me vibes of saying that it's time to like mature. And I'm not calling you immature here, Aquarius, but. With the Devil and the Seven of Swords, you know, with the Judgment card, it can definitely represent like needing to leave something behind. Um, you know, the well, let's put it this way: these people are rising up out of these coffins, and the coffin represents their old life. Outside the coffin represents their new life, and so they are being called by their higher self. This is their higher self angel uh, into a new life, but they have to like leave everything behind them behind. You know, they can't uh, stay in those coffins, and so I feel for a lot of you. That again, that makes a lot of sense with this Between Worlds card. And, you know, I think the Devil and the Seven of Swords can just be things you're attached to. Like I always say, I don't think tarot has to be drama, drama, drama. I think it very rarely is, actually. So, <laughs> you know, to me, the Devil can just be anything that you're attached to. It doesn't have to be something super dramatic. It could just be a job that sucks. It could just be that um, you've had enough of where you live. And again, that doesn't even have to be a bad thing. You can just say you're looking for greener pastures or you're just looking for somewhere where you can be, you know, expand. It's like if you live in uh, North Pole, Alaska, where there's nothing that lives there um, or no people. It's like maybe you're looking to live somewhere where there are people or you know, maybe you're looking to move somewhere where there's more opportunity. So like I said, I don't think this de devil has to be something uh, that's been controlling you like in a negative way. You know, it could just be more controlling you in your environment or like where you live or um, you know, the place you work. It's like maybe there's no room for growth where you work, and so now you're looking for something new. Uh, you know, normally um, the way that I set these readings up is it's like, you know, I do your current general energies, what's coming in for you, and so on. But I also do like past, present, future outcome at the same time. So I do feel that you've already been thinking about like walking away from something or removing yourself from something uh, that is maybe limiting your potential. Uh, even the Seven of Swords, you know, can be lying, cheating, stealing, and I would definitely, I mean, we, this this particular retrograde in Sagittarius definitely uh, could bring back the exes, and I think there's a lot more than that as well. I think the Pluto shift into your sign, into Aquarius from Capricorn, is really making people feel their karma, and, you know, it doesn't even have to be kind of like karma like we think of it. It just, you know, people really could be thinking about what they they missed out on. <laughs> and so, you know, I would be careful of past people coming back. But on top of that, the Seven of Swords is about like having a more lighthearted energy. He has these polka dots on his cloak and the polka dots in the tarot represent needing to be more playful or needing to have more fun. And that's kind of like more of what I'm getting. Um, you know, again, I would be careful of someone from the past. Definitely judgment can definitely, um, you know, bring someone back from the past. Uh, but what I would say is I think it's encouraging you to be more playful or to step into a more uh, playful energy. With the Judgment card, you have the Ace of Swords. Yeah, this is like your truth. I think all your past readings have been about your truth. There is something about Aquarius stepping into their truth, like what you really want to be when you grow up, grow up or, you know, the type of person you really want to be. So I think that's the kind of victory um, that you're going to be working on probably for a long time. Uh, you know, is, this is something you'll be working on for a long time is what I'm trying to say. And I think that as long as you're, uh, you know, kind of doing things in balance with the Ace of Swords, you will be victorious. I also get the vibe, like I do feel like some of you could be overcoming an obstacle here. The sword is above the mountains on the Ace of Swords and it does, it, you know, sometimes it can represent overcoming something or overcoming an obstacle. 
Uh, with the devil, you have the hangman. Yeah, this could be a person who made you wait. So, you know, it could have been a person who had you in like a holding pattern or just never would really move things forward. So if you had a person like that, I would be careful. You know, this person could be coming in to tell the truth as well it, with that ace of swords. But again, I would like I I, de I just get a feeling, <laughs> you know, I did the end of the year readings and I said it to basically everyone that I just have a feeling that this time, you know, this set of retrogrades really could be one of those sets where a lot of people um, have exes coming back. So I, j I would just be careful, right, with this energy. Uh, with the Seven of Swords, you have the Empress. Yeah, like uh, realizing your worth is what I get off of this Empress energy. I think that for a lot of you, you know, this is another one of those readings that's probably all about you uh, in a lot of, like in a good way, of course, but I, th I think you're realizing your worth and it doesn't matter what gender you are. I think you're just in this Empress mode, you know, in receptive mode, willing to uh, receive good things and, you know, kind of trying to create that balance as well because we go to the Justice card even this way. We go to the Justice card from that Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords is all about balance. And, you know, going this direction of the Six of Wands, um, this would be you focusing more on winning, <laughs> which I think, of course, would be a good idea. Uh, next, and, you know, I want to say this as well. I'm pretty sure it was you, like a couple weeks ago, I was saying, I was talking about like walking through more open doors. And I think that's what this reading is getting at as well. You you are more focused on open doors, not closed doors. Like again, in, in all areas of your life, love, business, money, everything. It's like if something is hard and just nothing is working, I think you're going to walk away from those things. If something allows you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Wait, I got to organize these words in my head. It's like if something is going to just work and it's going to allow you to work with it, then I think you will work through, walk through that door. Uh, next in the area of what's coming in for you, you have this cougar. It says motherhood, sensuality, and reverence. You have this mermaid. It says femininity, allure, and charm. So, you know, again, if you are looking for love, I would definitely get out there, um, especially you being a fixed sign. I think fixed signs uh, need people to see them with their eyes. So, <laughs> you know, I think you have to get out in public. And, you know, again, you could be very charming at this time. So that's good. Uh, it seems to me like it's an also an amazing time to like birth new ideas. Pretty much every single sign at the end of the year here has had these readings of like uh, motherhood or birthing something. And that doesn't have to be a child. It could be you birthing a new idea or a new business or a new direction. Uh, you have the Seven of Pentacles, the Justice card, and the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, Seven of Pentacles is my card that says, is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, he's wondering, is it worth it or was it worth it to put all this work into these Pentacles or is there something better? Uh, Seven of Pentacles really represents a change in direction. And so he's kind of like looking for a new direction. You have the Two of Swords right next to the Seven of Pentacles. Uh, she is thinking on the Two of Swords that she only has two directions, but really there's a third direction that she could move in if she opened up to it. So I think for a lot of you that you are kind of like exploring new paths, I would be careful of like analysis paralysis with the Seven of Pentacles. Mercury retrograde can definitely uh, bring about analysis paralysis where it's like we think we need to know more or when we really don't or we are just overthinking something too much and you have the knight of pentacles here as well so i would be careful of that energy i think that if you are stuck in analysis paralysis not moving forward on something that you should pay attention to justice justice is cause and effect it says if you take that little step towards something you want what happens do you get a result or not. And if you get a result, keep going. If you don't get a result, it's time to change direction and do something different. Uh, the justice card again could also be, you know, justice or like an apology. Uh, like I said, I would be careful of any like apologies this way, this way, or, you know, anyone who's trying to like tug on your heartstrings as well. Uh, you know, I kind of get the feeling that this person's like a more, I don't know, like lost puppy type of energy. It's like you feel bad for them even though they're a jerk. So I don't know. I would just be careful of that. <laughs> uh, you have the Knight of Pentacles. Uh, Knight of Pentacles can represent progress, and but it can also represent a little bit of overthinking energy. So I would make sure that you're, you know, chances are if you are, if you feel like you're overthinking something, you are. So there you go. I do think you've learned over the past several years, like how to be better at making choices and decisions. But, you know, again, I would be, just be careful of getting stuck. With the Seven of Pentacles, you have the Three of Cups. 
You have three cups is about celebration, enjoyment, happiness, socializing, community, all those things. Uh, they're celebrating a harvest. The Seven of Pentacles, even though it's a card of a change in direction, he has a harvest. He has grown those pentacles in front of him. So again, a lot of you, you know, could be celebrating some sort of harvest, or if you've been working on like a project or a business or a job, you know, you could be getting some sort of reward or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And I think that could be leading to a celebration. With the Justice card, yep, you have the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is everything you want and desire. Uh, every single person gets the Ten of Pentacles. It's actually pretty crazy to me. <laughs> um, I, like, I, I can't remember another year, uh, like 2024, um, you know, before where people have had like the same card in every single reading I do. So Ten of Pentacles is building and leaving a legacy. I think that it's probably Uranus and Taurus is the one I always blame for this energy because Uranus and Taurus wants true freedom. And Ten of Pentacles, you know, if we build and leave a legacy, we will have true freedom in life. You know, it's kind of like having everything you want and desire. And I don't think we ever truly get everything we want and, and desire. But again, it, it is definitely a card of having, you know, the freedom uh, to create everything you want and desire. So I think a lot of you are at least working towards the Ten of Pentacles, uh, but really good card for money. Uh, with the Knight of Pentacles, you have the Queen of Wands. Uh, yeah, like I, I think that you are, you definitely have to be bold, assertive, you know, go for what you want. She has to take the risk of following the sun. She has this sunflower right here. And the sunflower points towards the sun, which it means that it's pointing towards her happiness or something that she feels enthusiastic about or something she feels will bring her joy. Now, people in her life might be telling her not to do it, whatever whatever it is, because she has this black cat right here. And during the times of tarot, black cats were considered very unlucky. So the whole point of the black cat is that she doesn't care what people think. She just likes the black cat. And so she's going to do it anyway. And I kind of feel there's something that you have to do anyway, where it's like people could be telling you, like, oh, that's not going to work or, um, you know, oh, oh, you could never date that person or, you know, whatever it is. But I think you need to like take the risk to move towards your happiness with this card. Uh, next, you have in the area of messages from your future self. You, here you go. You have this card that says, believe in the impossible. And you also have this card that says, have faith in your dreams. They be, they kind of say the same thing. Uh, you, you might have some sort of impossible dream or you might have an idea that seems like a little bit difficult to accomplish. And I think these two cards are definitely encouraging you to move towards it. It's kind of funny because Leo also always gets this message. Leo is your opposite sign. And uh, you have Leo showing up in your reading. You have the strength card. So, you you know, again, this very much reminds me of that energy. And the reason I'm talking about this is because we have Mars retrograding in Leo. And so you're def being the opposite sign. You are going to feel this retrograde, um, you know, just as much basically as Leo. And I think that you do have to kind of like do something that is like harder in life or, um, you know, to get something great, you're going to have to do kind of believe in the impossible and make it happen, right? Uh, you have the Two of Swords, the Strength card, and the Six of Wands. Two of Swords really says this is probably going to be easier than you think. Again, she has this third island behind her, and that third island, or this new place, this third place over here. And if she would kind of like open up to the possibilities, which, you know, this card kind of says believe in the, the impossible, but it could be saying, you know, open up to infinite possibilities, really, then she it would allow her to be more flexible. And it would allow her to accomplish things in a, in a better way. So I think that if there's something you want in life, that this is saying, you know, you need to go for it and you just need to find another way. You have the strength card. Uh, I really feel like you've earned something. I'm pretty sure I said this to you in your December reading as well. I'm pretty sure it was you, Aquarius. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Like, I, I, I'm having major deja vu here, and I'm pretty sure you had it as your, like, last card in the December reading, and I was saying that you've earned something or you've earned the right to claim something, and so that's the feeling I get off the strength card. You know, the strength card requires strength. She is taming this lion that is that she's holding on to here. And so she's kind of like earned the right to display her strength. And, you know, I feel like you've earned the right to claim something as your own. And that's really the only message I get here. You have the Six of Wands. Six of Wands, of course, is a victory or a big success coming in for you. And you also have the Ace of Swords, which is also a victory. So this direction here looks very positive going this way. 
And you also have two sixes. Uh, two sixes, I love two sixes. Two sixes says you're on the right path. I look at two sixes touching each other as kind of like confirmation for your path. And with the two of swords, you have the five of pentacles. Yes, five of pentacles has a very easy solution. Again, she's thinking this or that on that two of swords. And the five of pentacles is calling attention to your weaknesses. And five of pentacles says you need to call, make sure that you're focusing on your strengths, not your weaknesses. And that's what I would double down on here with that two of swords. Uh, with this strength card, you have the five of wands. I think you have overcome something. You know, again, you have you have the chaos and conflict card here. Five of wands is chaos and conflict. So I think a lot of you have maybe, you know, this is kind of like saying, number one, you've learned your lesson, so don't go back to the past, right? <laughs> uh, right here. You've learned what you needed to learn. It's time to move forward. Um, but this also says that you can kind of like handle any chaos or conflict that's coming your way. You have developed the strength to overcome something. With the Six of Wands, you have the King of Pentacles. We see a lot of wealth here. I mean, Knight of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Empress. These are very good cards for um, building something long term. And I, I think that you being a fixed sign, this is a big focus for fixed signs right now is building things that are long term. And that could be anything. It could be a business, could be a job, could be a side hustle, could be a relationship, whatever you want. Um, but again, I would be, you know, again, I, I think the reading is saying make that your focus, long term successes. Uh, you have this, uh, in the area of the good stuff, you have this slow victory card and this divine awakening card. I feel like, like I'm hearing it, it was worth the wait. So if something was a slow victory or if you have been waiting for something for a long time, I kind of feel that in the future, uh, in the near future, you're going to be seeing that you know, it was worth the wait, whatever you have been, whatever it is that you've been waiting for, whatever this slow victory is. You have the Queen of Cups, the Hermit, and the Six of Swords. Queen of Cups is about following your heart and listening to your intuition. So with that Queen of Wands as well, I, I look at the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Cups as kind of similar. Uh, again, the Queen of Wands, she has to follow the sun, and the sun could, you know, could be her heart, and then the Queen of Cups has to listen to her heart to make the right decision. So the, I, I look at them as very similar energies, and I kind of feel this is just saying the same thing. Uh, you have the Hermit. Uh, the hermit can be uh, you coming out of hermit mode. Uh, I think you just haven't had something for a while, whatever it is. So, you know, it's like if you haven't had love for years, you know, this could be you had to put yourself in hermit mode to heal or to learn things. And now you're coming out of hermit mode. Uh, if it was money, same thing or, you know, whatever else it was doesn't really matter. But I kind of feel like you're coming out of hermit mode with the hermit. And I don't really, you know, I think you've learned a lot is what that card is saying. Uh, you have the Six of Swords, definitely improvements. You know, I think you're moving on to calmer shores. You're moving away from the conflicts as well with the Five Wands going this direction. And I think you've overcome, you know, a lot of different stuff. With the Queen of Cups, you have the Eight of Swords. I feel like you're opening up more. Again, Eight of Swords would normally be self-imposed restriction. But in the area of the good stuff, I would say that you're being more open. You are being more kind of um, will willing to open up to different ways of doing things. Or you're being more open with your heart. And I think this is a good thing, of course. Uh, with the Hermit, you have the Fool. Yep, exactly what, like I said. You know, the Hermit is standing at the top of the mountain. The Fool is standing at the top of a cliff. He's willing to look foolish as well. I do think you are about to do something that people are saying is foolish because of that queen of wands. You know, like I said, I, I, I get that feeling of people saying like, don't do this, don't do that, or, you know, that's a big risk or, you know, whatever people say. People just, you know, verbal diarrhea, right? And so I think you're <clears throat> going to take the leap of faith no matter what. You know, I kind of get a very, um, like, you only live once type of energy here where you're saying, you know what, like, it's it's almost like you're saying, you know what, I might like, look like a fool if I, you know, start that business or do that thing that I want to do that seems impossible or, you know, but is a dream, like the have faith in your dreams card and the believe in the impossible card. Uh, but I also feel that you're going to do it anyway. So, I, you know, again, I like that energy. Very good. With the six of swords, you have the six of pentacles. Yeah, more balance. The whole entire reading is kind of talking about balance with the Ace of Swords and the Justice card. Six of Pentacles is creating a life of balance. And that's what I kind of feel like you're doing here, Aquarius. So love it. Uh, you have this door card. You can't make that up. I Didn't I literally say something about doors? I'm pretty sure I did. You, It says opportunities are waiting for you. Yes, you just have to walk through those open doors like I was talking about. Uh, you have this funnel card. It says period of frustration, lessons to be learned. I think that's the between worlds card. Again, that definitely represents coming out of period of frustration. And so again, I actually feel this is a good thing. It's like you're coming out of a period of frustration. 
You have this barrel. It says you feel something is lacking in your life, life, perhaps money, love, or goals. So again, if something is lacking, that could be what you're focusing on here with this reading is like whatever energy you feel like you don't have that you want, I think you are going and getting it uh, with this card. And, and to, to basically just to create balance because Ace of Swords, Justice, and the Six of Pentacles, it's like you're balancing the energies out in your life. And obviously that would be a good thing with this energy. Uh, you have this club card. It says someone will try to make you do something against your will. Again, Mars retrograde. I say it all the time. Mars retrograde. And I don't think this is anyone trying to get you to do something against your will. I think this is those people that are telling you that something is a bad idea or something is impossible or that you shouldn't do something. So it's like they're not really trying to get you to do anything. They're just trying to get you to not do something. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I think people don't want us to do things because we will outgrow them or we will... Um, you know, they're afraid we're gonna that they're gonna lose us or something like that. So I don't really feel this is like control. I think this is more, you know, people just kinda just trying to not lose you, if that makes sense. Now you have this March card and this this claw card says, be careful, do not take risks. I don't think that's totally true. Again, I always say I don't really like this card right now because I think we're in a time where we have to take risk. One thing I will say is we don't get out of all this retrograde energy basically until March ish you know, kind of really April, if you want to be technical about it. So, you know, you, I, I would say that as long as you're taking calculated risks, then you'll be fine. But I think that it is saying like, don't take risks that you haven't researched, especially we still have Uranus and Taurus. I think the easiest way to work with Uranus and Taurus is to do your research on anything that you're going to be doing. So I would make sure to do that. But you know, this is kind of true, but also kind of not true. So I'll say that. But uh, this looks really good here, Aquarius. I like it. Uh, thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your month.